Hi, and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekender Show. Yes, 2nd of April, TMA, just flying. So, what happens now? All your teams have had your games this weekend, except for DXDL, Club DXDL. I don't know what it was, we could not get a friendly whatsoever. Um, you could take this was yesterday, by the way. Uh, we've tried everywhere. Um, I'm unsure how you do get friendlies. One of the teams cancels against us, um, saying all the kids were away. Well, um, yeah, okay, that happens, but um, pointless because um, at the end of the day, the teams just have to wait four weeks before, or our team, before they have another game. It's a long, it's a month. Uh, it's happened a couple of times this season, so um, long, long days, but the kids will get over it, I suppose, and we'll try and get into one or two tournaments very soon for them, just to keep the momentum going. But I suppose this is grassroots football now, the way things are going. Um, teams refusing to play because uh, you're a better standard. I don't know where we go, we'll have to um, we debate this, we're going to sit down with a couple of... Um, people who have been around in grassroots football for quite some time and we're going to discuss this, get them in, discuss it, um, exactly what the coaches want, do they want um, a club of lower level players, at the end of the day I don't know, I hate using lower level, you know good standards, um, that's, that's all we can say because kids same age, like, like in school what you do, you don't sort of right throw them out the class because they, the kids are a little bit behind in developing, um, do you? No you don't, you try and develop them yourselves and that's the way a coach should be, they should develop the kids, if they're good coaches, you know, that's what the coaches are there for, good coaches develop kids, make them better and better and better, um, but unfortunately, when you're looking at them, um, there's a lot of Teams are saying um, they're not to a high standard, they're not to a high level. I, I give up on all the levels, I really do, because I just look at ages, I look at kids, and do you know what? Going back, and all my lads will tell you, growing up now, I've got kids, um, we used to play the best, and we never used to moan. We used to develop the kids, it was always good. You know, we looked, we were really getting Tom 15, 20 nils, and we developed, I developed those kids to go on to better things and eventually win a cup. That is development, and you've got to play the best to become the best. But if teams are shying away of playing from better teams, what are they going to learn? If the coaches are telling us, we won't play them because, no, they're not good enough for our kids. Coaches... I'm sure I'll get some messages, I need to get some messages, marathontextaline.com um, Kids should have fun at a lower age, yeah, great fun, fantastic, but teams who are good within themselves and good with each other and good playing, what happens there? What happens there? I, I don't know. Um, it seems they're getting segregated because they're better players and that is unfair in grassroots football in my eyes. Anyway, yeah, no doubt we'll be catching up to one or two uh, coaches. We'll have a little debate about that, no doubt. And they're quite welcome to come into this studio and we'll have that debate and see what we can iron out. I'm sure it'll be a good debate, to be honest. Anyway, I hope whatever you've done, whatever you were, whatever you've, even your Premier League team's all done good for you this weekend. And a massive thanks to all the officials at the EFL Trophy Final, um, Bolton, Plymouth, the officials who wore our t-shirts during the warm-ups, I'll have all the um, the proofs later on, no doubt. I'll be able to put them all up on the website of them posing with our respect, our 20th anniversary t-shirts. Now, I think there's a lot of clubs out there, and a lot of clubs I know, who want to talk to them every single weekend. We're all great, they all believe in what we're doing. But when you put something else on the social media, they don't share, they don't... They're all four, don't cross the line. They're all four, ref spec. They're all four, no ref, no game. They're all four, trying to keep our referees within the game. But they go very, very silent when you put these posts out. You know, you ask them to. So, what is the problem? 
I'd love to hear back off you coaches out there. Why aren't you supporting it? Why aren't you getting behind? Excuse me, behind our referees. And um, that's you know, well, the referee. There is no game. We know that. And respect goes both ways. I understand that as well, and I agree with that. Yes, I agree with that. We're there to protect the referee because the referee takes the flak, the verbal abuse, the aggressive behaviour from sideline spectators who are uh, irate and when they're doing that, who also does it affect on the field of play? Yes, you've guessed it, it's the kids. It's the kids, so that's why we're protecting the referees because the kids hear what the irate parents or spectators are coming out with and their threats towards and the, the abuse towards a referee. So, this is why we formed Don't Cross the Line, protecting the kids, you'll see us with the kids as well. They need to enjoy the game and that's what we want to see. Every kid, every child enjoy their game as well as the referee. So there you go, Don't Cross the Line is all around and that is the message to all you coaches. People, I've had one or two coaches come up to me and said, you know, I, I agree with what it is, you know, what, what you're doing, but at the end of the day, respect goes both ways, you know. What about respect from the referee towards the teams and the coaches? Well, I, I think the referee does give a lot of respect to the kids as well. Now, be honest, I've seen millions of games, millions in grassroots football, and it's not the referee who is irate, it's coaches and spectators that have watched and seen and heard them complain. So, let's see how these things go. Can't wait till this debate goes in. But as I say, a massive thanks to the officials from the EFL who wore our t-shirts. The next one is on the 29th, 30th and 31st of April. The reason I'm saying the 31st is because I think Everton Football Club are away to Leicester on the Monday evening. So we've got Friday, Saturday and Sunday with the officials wearing our t-shirts. They're all there. Yes, 20th anniversary t-shirts looking good and I've had loads of requests for the t-shirts. Now, if you message me on social media, I'll tell you where you can get them. Um, but also, we do not do the 4XL. So if Rob Lindsay is watching this, get in touch with me, Rob. You know my email address. Um, because I'm sure we can look and find these t-shirts out somewhere. The bigger sizes are a problem yet again. I don't know why we need... Well, the reason why they're a problem because... These are different design, these are our design, these are unique to so don't cross the line and the referees as well. And that's why we're using them. But by all means you can have a plain black one if that means if that's okay with yourselves, we can get them in. So you can message myself or Rob, maladontextaline.com. And then we'll go from there, we'll get you all sorted. That is the way that we can do it. So apologies to many of the referees and people who just want them, who want four or five five xl honestly if we could get them we would and well i think we can but they won't be the black and white ones to be a little bit different so we'll see what we can get you and just give us a message but apologies if you've been waiting for your t-shirts they're the size we can only do double xl that's all they go up to um and we'll go we'll go from there and i think some are xl just XL as well because some of these companies don't go any higher. Don't ask me why, I'm not the manufacturer, but there you go. Cheers anyway, so let's hope that you've enjoyed your football. If you're in cups, if you're in within the leagues, yeah, well done to all your teams, but also well done to every team that took part. And you know what? As I say, I want to save this for the debate because um, some managers and coaches out there, I don't know what it is, the... It, it's you've got to encourage all kids if that kid is a, a, a or these children these teams are good at what they do support them get behind them even if they're playing your own team i done that i done that right the way through when i was coaching my team and those players were all still and i still get them called gaffer now and they're all involved in grassroots football they would tell you we respected the referee we respected the opposition but it brought them on they wanted to play the better teams and they became better footballers. That's what happens, that is development in itself. And uh, you know, uh, why some coaches are pulling 
teams back and saying they're a small level, no, we can't play them, they're too good for us. Yes, we understand goals could go in, but watch the team, try and encourage your teams to play these good teams. That's what I've done right the way through. Unfortunately, we did. Honestly, we really did. Martin Waldron had a cracking team, and he'll tell you the improvement that we've done with our team as we got up. As we started developing, we started to get better, and we started to give them a game. That's the difference. Obviously, I don't think we beat them, though, but maybe we did. We won a cup once, or was it a draw? I'm not too sure. I think we were held into a draw once. But you know what? That is development at its best. That is kids developing themselves, but becoming better players. And if you ask those kids now, they would tell you, men now, adults, they would tell you that that method, playing better teams, give them more insight into how the game is played and it made them better players. Better tackles, yes it was on the on the grass. Honestly you saw a massive improvement and it was great to see. You just knew. They didn't shy away. They got better and better and better. They didn't make professionals, no they didn't. But at the end of the day, their kids might just do that now because they're all in academies. All. So you see where I'm coming from. They have developed themselves within football. They become managers, they become good parents, they're travelling all over the country with their children. It's development and the parents who got involved with our team are doing exactly the same with their younger players, their younger team, their kids. It's great. And you know what? Can't wait for this debate that we'll get in here because I want to find out, I've got the questions and I think Everyone in grassroots football will understand that everyone, every coach has got something different. Every coach has got a different method, a different format. And they all think this works, this is the best. But if that's the case, where are all these players in our Premier League teams? Are we the best coaches in the world? Are the kids, why are the kids, if, if we're all saying they're not good enough? Do we need better coaches? I don't know. Do we do, we've got to develop the kids and there's some late developers who are coming on as well. So um, I think a lot of people out there watching this will know where I'm coming from. If you've got a good team and you can't get a friendly, it's managers backing away. I don't know what it is because there's, surely there's some good teams who want friendlies and develop and have, you know, friendlies are friendlies. That's is the no such thing as a friendly. We know that, especially in the North, um, everyone is out. They've got the passion, they love the football and they all want to win. Whether you say, no, this is a friendly, you only say it because there's nothing to play for. And nine times out of ten now, there's nothing to play for in the league. You go there and you play, you may as well just have, bring street football back. There we go. There's the answer. Bring street football back. We all become better players. We all learnt it there, didn't we? It was absolutely fantastic. Anyway, your thoughts. I'm sure I'll get a load of thoughts now. Maladontextheline.com. If you want to be part of that debate, we can put you down because I'm sure there'll be one or two coaches wanting to come in and hear their views and tell you their formats and what they do and what they brought and what they're, they're aiming to do but they'll all have different methods I learnt off the best I learnt off my um, nephew professional footballer Dave Rogers he came in he showed me he coached up some of the kids and it was great to learn and brought fun into the game as well and that's what we do we have fun with our kids as well whether the best of players what do we do they're having fun they're learning, they're developing football. You take all those skills away from them and just say, no, let's all just have fun. It's not about winning. You, the kids, you can't take that away. And oh, I think everyone knows where I'm coming from. And I'm sure there's some coaches out there who <laughs> know exactly that as well. But I talk to them week in, week out. And as I say, everyone will always run another coach down. Everyone will always say, yeah, these, they've all got different methods, but we don't work together. I've learned more now with getting involved in the DXTL under sevens, club DXTL under sevens, and listening to the touchlines, listening to man managers, coaches, listening, because you're brought back into that circle where I was walking around with respect, and I still do, and don't cross the line. But it's a difference now. People are coming to me now because you're involved in a football team and telling me things, you know, could be, if anyone knows the Marjorie Proops of grassroots football, well there you go, there you go, lend me an ear. Anyway, I could write a book, I could write a book and about all this, a different book but don't cross the line, but you know where I'm coming from, I really could, but would you like to be mentioned in that book? Anyway, yes, 
grassroots football is coming to a close. People are starting to talk about where they're going, what they want to do, what leagues they want to go in. And don't get me wrong, we try to go up a year in our league and it's hard now finding your team to go into another league when leagues are asking for money up front. You can't just keep pay willy-nilly as you know in grassroots football. We charge next to nothing. We're a not-for-profit organisation. Clubs coming to us, teams coming to us, will only pay the bare minimum. That's all we ask for. We do not want to take any money. We want to put it all back into grassroots football. And we want to develop the kids in a sense that we want our own. We want our own children, bring them on board and develop them that way. We're not taking teams in and putting them under the banner and there was an exception, but one team, which is DXDL Lionesses, who were a good football team and they went into a football league and we brought them on board and they're playing in the Warrington League. That was it, that's fantastic. But you know what? Their parents, unbelievable. Now we had a problem now. If anyone doesn't know me, we did have parent problems, but we dealt with it. We have dealt with it. And that's what Don't Cross the Line is all about. We want to bring people together. We want to make a difference with people. We want to make a difference with our kids. And we want to make a difference with our team. And we'll always respect the referee. And we'll always tell that referee, if one of our children are out of order, simbing them, do whatever you think is right, you'll have our full support. And up to now, absolutely nothing. The referees are talking, they're all coming to us. After all those games that we played in their first season, and highly commending them. All the referees are coming over and watching them, admiring the team. What is wrong about admiring a young team that's developing great and could go on to bigger and better things? We've had one or two comments, people praising us, like to go and watch them. Fantastic, if, if there was a professional kids team then we want to be in that part, but there's other teams out there, there's better teams than us. Anyway, you know, I'm having my rant, I'm having a little go, but um, there you go. We just want to work together, bring people together and bring this respect together. We want to bring coaches on board with us. Coaches who turn a blind eye as to what's going on on the field. But when something does happen, I get a lot of coaches coming to me talking about it. Um, have you heard anything, you know, on all this? And I do hear a lot, believe me. But as what I hear and what I see stays with me and it'll just go to the relevant people. That's all it goes to. I'm not you, or oh, we'll do this, we'll do that. You know, there's a lot of that going on. I like to work, bring managers together, referees together, parents together, kids together, committees together, bring everyone together, bring the football family together, and I'll always try to bring organisations together, but some organisations do not want to be part of what we're doing. They want to try and do their own thing, and that's fine, fine by me, so long as you're making a difference and keeping the kids playing football, the referees refereeing, and also coaches in check. Because we do have a lot of coaches, we know that. A lot of coaches who are irate, and um, we were talking about the charter standards. I still see teams, you know, the FA, and I've told them, I see teams who are charter standards, and the behaviour out of half of them is, is honestly, it, it still does happen, no matter what you do. There's going to be poor behaviour on sidelines, on touchlines, on the field of play. You can't control it. It's one of those things you can always make an awareness about it. But you can make a difference, make it a little bit better, but will it all go away? I doubt it very, very much. But if we're all singing off the same song sheet and we all take action and the FA and the county FAs and all the football's government bodies and excuse me, and the fire engines, you can't do not the water soundproof studio, when they're going past, hope they're not putting the ladder up on my window, now they've gone, I'm alright, I'm safe. It's bringing everyone together and that's what we want to do. We want to bring everyone together in Gresham football and make a difference. We have no animosity towards coaches, towards teams, towards any players, nothing towards any parents. We want to talk to everyone and if someone's got a grudge against me or something, come and sit down, come and talk and that, that's all it's about. We don't know what it is. You know, rumours are terrible in grassroots football. One person will see something and then it'll get back to the hundred person who wasn't even there and it's totally different. The story you hear and I, believe me, I sit there with committees and we talk about it because we've seen it and they've heard the same. They've had reports. Everything does never match up and I'm sure the county FAs will have all that on their reports as well. 
But there you go, let's see what the county FAs can bring in and the FA, you know, um, some better action in something that will make grassroots football tick. And I think there is a few changes coming in for next season. I've not seen them all yet, so I've got to sit down, concentrate and look at them because I've got that much going on. You just can't cope at the moment, I can't keep up. But at the end of the day, all I want to do, I'm there for the kids, any teams that come in, you want to see what we've got planned for these kids to make a difference in our club. And we will, and the parents will love it. As I say, we're a club that will not be for profit. We can't be, we're a not-for-profit organisation. That's why we're taking the kids on board to help with the Respect programme. Believe me, I'm there every week talking to those kids and talking about the referee. I don't think coaches are there every week to them, they're there all sorts of giving advice on what to do, there you go, but we are joining into them to respect the opponents, to respect the touch lines, when anything said ignore it, come back to us, we'll deal with it, and the referee respect, we put that in, I have the coin, every single game that we toss with the opposition to the referee, and the referee can be open and honest and talk to them about respect and what he expects of those kids, so it, it it, it starts the ball rolling, doesn't it? The kids are all interested then. And you, we've seen some brilliant games. Take one, KB Thunder. Honestly, absolutely brilliant. We've become great friends, the parents, the whole lot. You know, it, it's, it's all about kids enjoying football. And they give us a game every single time. What it is, don't know. But the, the teams live themselves. And Gary would tell you, who's the manager of them, would tell you today that playing us will make his kids better players and we understand we know that he's one of those coaches that will want to play better teams to improve his team's performance and no doubt he'll develop them and we've come across each other in a friendly or maybe next season and we know that we're in for the game and that's great to hear but we want to be in for the game with every team every single team and I keep going on about I'm going back to our kids but what about your kids how are they developing? What are they doing? What have they done within the league? We're there to improve our games all together. And let's work it all together. Well, there you go. We've come to the end of our third show. Uh, the reason I'm on, I wasn't out at the Walton Caredale today because I'm called into work for quite a bit. So that's going to get in the way, would you believe, over the next few weeks. So we can only fit in what I can fit in. Um, and no doubt we'll have one or two coaches, managers, getting in touch with us and saying, yeah, can we have a little uh, gym work? Can we all come together? Can we all have a talk? We want to bring people together. We don't want animosity with any coach whatsoever. And if I say something and it's wrong for yourselves, let's discuss it. Let's not slag each other off. It's not about that. It's all about grassroots football. It's all about the kids developing their skills and also the referees developing their skills. And what happens? We all work together. We all make that happen. And we can make a better grassroots football world together, can't we? And then we can class it as the grassroots football family. But I think, in my eyes, the grassroots football family is glad, gradually splitting up and going its separate ways. I think we need to bring that together again. From myself, my lean on the team here, the grassroots show, don't cross the line, respect programme, no ref, no game, even our hearts of gold. We wish you a very good night. Put your feet up, relax, and I hope this week flies if you're looking forward to Monday football. But then again, Easter's coming, and I'm sure many of you are on a break. Don't forget to crack those eggs. See you next Friday with myself because the young commentators are on holiday. Have a great one. Good night, God bless. <laughs>